you probably think that you've seen or heard this animation before and that's because you have because these animations are all connected to a large number of video games that are made by one company which we love supercell supercell has been holding the monopoly on top of the mobile gaming industry for a while now simply because of how good their strategy is when it comes to releasing new games before fortnite mobile came out everyone was addicted to clash of clans clash royale and brawl stars the dynamics were simply too good but what you probably didn't know is that Supercell has had a recurring factor in all of their games, which makes them so addictive. But how did Supercell even manufacture their games so well to the point that every game made ended up being a straight banger? Man, they really know what they're doing. Supercell was founded by, allow me to absolutely butcher their names, Lika Penanen, Miko Kodi Soja, and Lassie Lepenen. One thing that was common between all of them was that they loved gaming and wanted to make games that could be played for minutes but still provide that deep and engaging experience we get from playing normal video games. And I'm not sure if you've noticed, but this is something that a lot of video games are missing. If you go to the app store right now, it's filled with copy paste games with insane amount of ads. You pretty much see more ads than the amount you spend actually playing the games. However, that's where Supercell gains their competitive advantage. They focus on quality over quantity, which can be portrayed due to them only having 6 active video games over a 14 year span. This brings us to the release of their first ever game in 2011. And no, it wasn't Clash of Clans nor heyday it was actually another mmo game gunshine however it was not as successful as their games which would be released later down the line gunshine being the first game missed upon many factors that could have contributed to its success the game just did not resonate with the target audience they were trying to get and it struggled to attract and retain the player base for a longer period of time this game sucks my spider balls it's horrible it also failed in its monetization process because it heavily relied on in-game purchases. This made the game be perceived as unfair by the player base which caused massive dissatisfaction. My disappointment is immeasurable. And the biggest problem of them all, the well-established gaming companies at the time had massive upper hand and were too much of a competition for Gunshine to see its glory days. But this was not going to stop Supercell from achieving success and that indeed happened with the release of Clash of Clans and Heyday in 2012 which went on to be internet sensations of mobile gaming and both of which are till today are active and keep getting updates. When both of these games were released, they were instant hits and reached the top charts of App Store and Google Play which generated significant amount of revenue for Supercell. But how was it that both games reached the levels they did? I could go into the analytics and statistics of what they did right, but I wanted to tell this section based on my own experience playing their games growing up. One thing that is common in all their games is the play to win aspect of it. This gives the feeling of wanting to keep grinding their games to reach a higher level, unlock a new character, level up your town hall, reach a higher rank, you name it. Every time you close the game, you leave with a feeling of wanting to come back just to do that one more thing to improve your experience. It's like climbing a mountain but every time you reach the peak, there's another peak. And the best part is, even though they have microtransactions in the game, which can make the game pay to win, all of those things are still still achievable just by playing the game. Nothing is locked off behind a paywall except like battle passes which are mostly cosmetic. 300 black men for only 2 pounds! Besides that, the game design is just perfect. It just hits the spot. It feels like Disney made games combined with a unique art style. Everything from their characters to sound effects on the buttons to their music gives you nostalgic feelings of playing the game even though it's new. Also the fact that they use the same characters across different games creating their own little universe like it's the Spider-Man multiverse. Each of their characters have their own personality and feel to them. We grew up watching Clash of Clans trailers for updates and watching that one VR video over and over again trying to feel what the characters felt like in that universe. Supercell has also put a massive effort into satisfying the player base. They were super attentive to feedback and extremely good with their balancing. In addition to that, they always kept their games fresh with constant amount of updates. 
This created that loyal and dedicated community which we can now see present all across of YouTube. Moreover, the games are extremely beginner friendly. When you first load up the game, you are not bombarded with information to memorize, instead you are guided through and put into fair matchmaking. And for the sweats, they have the rank mode and yes, there is a lot to learn in their games to give you that skill gap. They managed to keep both the casual and professional player base in their games. I could keep going on what they did right, like a little fangirl, but I also need to finish this video so let's move on. Everyone is supposed to have their ups and downs, but Supercell stayed quite far from its downs. Apart from negative feedback coming from some updates into their games, Supercell never really had massive controversies. Most of them are very vague and blank, such as accusations of Supercell cloning games. Supercell never really faced any heat, That's what she said. and that is most likely because of their mindset of how they ran their company. They were always quick to cut down their losses and shut down any game that was bound to fail. We can see their failures in this list where they had 13 failed games but never stopped producing and kept pushing to make the next better game. There are some articles out there on the internet that say that every time Supercell sunsets a game, they celebrate it with a toast of champagne. This shows the positive mindsets of the employees and how much they poured their hearts into the game development. They did not only celebrate their wins but also their losses. I can't believe it man. The game I put so much effort in is coming to an end. I think we should drink to that. Supercell is not looking to stop anytime soon. With such a strong portfolio of successful games and the development process being so refined and the years of experience over their years, the risk of failure is almost zero. They just put out Squad Up and it is already doing amazing. That is also due to the fact that Supercell has built a community over the years. Whenever Supercell puts out a new game, the community amassed from all the other games is almost certain to try out their new game instantly. And as mentioned before, the characters being the same across their gaming universe that they have created, people already feel at home. Supercell is no longer a startup and has achieved financial stability over the years. We are only going to look at more higher quality games in the upcoming years and I'm here for it. Overall, Supercell has never let us down and it does not look like they will be letting us down anytime soon. Please don't let this age like milk. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed, please, please, please like and subscribe. It will help me put out more of this content and make better videos. Like Supercell, I guess. <laughs>